Suppose that a particle is in potential Vx, which is independent of time, and its starting wave function is psi x and 0. In this video, we are going to find psi x and t for infinite square well. What we need to do is to solve the time-independent Schrodinger equation, which yields an infinite set of solutions, psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, and so on, for the wave function and also their associated energies, e1, e2, e3, and so on. The general linear combination of these solutions is psi x and 0 equals the sum of c and psi n from n equals 1 to infinity. The next step is to find different c n and finally construct psi x and t, the general solution at time t by adding e to the power of minus i e n t over h bar. The first case we want to discuss is the infinite square well in which the potential energy is 0 between 0 and a and infinite anywhere else. The probability of finding the particle outside the well is zero, so psi is zero outside the well. Inside the well, the potential is zero and the time-independent Schrodinger equation is like this. We can rewrite it as this equation. The coefficient of psi must be negative, otherwise psi and its second derivative have the same sign and psi wouldn't go to zero at infinity. E must be larger than zero so that psi doesn't go to infinity and also be normalizable. Let's rewrite this equation using k squared as the coefficient. It's like a simple harmonic oscillator in classical mechanics and the answer is a combination of sine and cosine. Now let's check the boundary conditions to find a and b. Based on the first condition, we find out that b is zero. So the cosine term vanishes. The second boundary condition gives k equals np over a and we have an infinite set of solutions for k. Pay attention that n starts at 1 because for 0k, psi x is always 0 and also we don't consider negative answers because they have nothing new. Now that we have found different k's, we have the particle's possible energies. To find a, we need to use the normalization condition, which yields square root of 2 over a. So far, we have found energy levels a and k. The time-independent wave equation is given by this expression. Now let's plot the first three ones. Psi 1 is called the ground states, and the others are excited states. We are going to talk about four important properties of these wave functions. First, these functions are alternately even and odd with respect to the center of the well. The second property is that the higher you go in energy, the more nodes you have. The ground state has no nodes, the next one has one node, and the second excited state has two nodes and so on. The third property is the orthogonality between each two states, which is expressed by this integral. And this is the proof, so pause the video if you like and take a look at it. So if m is not equal to n, the integral is zero, and if m is equal to n, we have the normalization condition and the integral would be one. The last property is their completeness, and we can express any other function as a linear combination of them. It's the Fourier series based on which we can write a function f of x using an infinite series of sines and cosines. Multiplying f of x by psi mx conjugate and integrate with respect to x, we can find the coefficient cm. So this is how we find the coefficients for the expansion of f of x based on our states. Based on what we already know, we now can find the general solution. And for the coefficients, all we need to do is to multiply psi x and 0 by psi n conjugate and integrate with respect to x, which yields cn. As an example, suppose that a particle is in an infinite square well with this initial wave function. We have these two expressions to find a wave function at time t. First, we need to normalize the initial wave function, and the next step is to find the coefficients. We need to find these two integrals. We can do this by using integration by parts, and if you need to take a look at it, just pause the video and see how they are calculated. We plug the answers into the last expression, and it's clear that if n is even, the coefficient is zero, and the wave function at time t is this. In the last section of this video, let's talk about these coefficients. They are independent of time, so we can use the initial wave function. We start with the normalization condition and find out that the square of the coefficients sum to 1. They are the possibility that a measurement yields a specific wave function psi n of x.